things related to that equipment at the back we had an enclosure you remember there is an ice box with some louvers like thing on one side one is on the front panel directly another one is in the rear for the vertical machining center because of various constraints you do, we are not expected to operate it directly from the center because all three sides we need access however for the horizontal machining center which is basically a simple trainer for turning things are visible directly on the top so both are possible two things you'll notice here is in the place we are using it though in principle it is used in a workshop and indoor the equipment itself is not necessarily indoor because there are coolants there is oil there is always then you have this machine chips which get splattered all over the place so the equipment should not give out any of these things nor get affected by adjacent machines or the operators or by it something so if you see here we have this thing about non hazardous locations which do not contain to create an explosion it looks simple what just looks like a when we talk about non hazardous areas which do not contain hazardous materials in sufficient quantity to create an explosion we all know about gases or occasionally even liquid typically when we talk about a gas it could be thing like uh, petrol or diesel and we talk about i am sorry when we talk about gases we mean uh, lpg or cng or uh, other uh, flammable gases when we talk about liquids we talk about these various types of oils and fuels and some of them we never know that a simple thing like floor or uh, flour as you people call it that whitish starch stuff we get, get from a mill is explosive difficult to believe isn't it so whenever you have any rice or other flour mills we also need to protect it from inherent explosion we won't think about it like that we won't think that a dry starch is capable of exploding but it does because it is also fuel depending on the content and depend on the other uh, things about it it is flammable absolutely if you go down we have non ventilated cabinets no intentional circulation or external air through the enclosure only it may get in through the gaps <coughs> ventilated means constructed so as to provide for circulation of external air through the enclosure to remove excess heat fumes or vapors <coughs> if you remember the introductory or the second lecture i talked to you about three things we need to think about when we are thinking about a product enclosure one of them is related to the usage aesthetics and so on another is related to the ergonomic point of view third is as part of the struck the technical thing this thing about how to cool the thing comes and finally we come here outdoor locations which are exposed to the weather so you see here what looked obviously very relatively simple simple definitions we come down to we have what is called type 1 type 2 type 3 and so on these are all meant for you 
should read it for yourself. You see in this we have two options here, one is they are ready and they remain operable when I slide in. This is because often because of the choice of materials, because of the choice of insulation things tend to tend to freeze or lock up. So, we make some arrangements to these things later on down more in detail is given here and I suggest you go to the now coming back to As we go down, what they were talking about are the NEMA standards, electrical manufacturers session standards. So, we have here enclosure types and so on and type 3, R, 4 and X and whether to be ventilated or not. Similarly, there is a cross uh, this thing about Canadian CSA is the Canadian cross reference underwriters and then NEMA and then type of enclosures minor difference are there because of we slowly come to old 529 one of the earliest standards related to enclosure design. So, they have been using a 3 numeral or 2 numeral designation which will ensure that uh, first numeral talks about completely unprotected this is the that open PCB which I have shown you, the access probe sphere of 50 mm shall have adequate clearance from hazardous parts. You have seen that in case is a large thing. So, if you can recollect the connector at one end and it was covered, the idea being in case you put the probe anywhere inside also none of them are likely to touch or cause damage. So, if you again recollect that uh, heat absorber which we have kept or the conduction plate that we have is by itself even something metallic touches nothing happens because it is insulated from one of the connections from the serious pass element it could be an emitter or a collector or equivalent to a source or a drain nothing will happen to that. Now, as we come down
one two three four slowly they talk about uh, in another slide these pictures are all explained properly. So, the first thing you will see here is typical characteristic hazards with a finger. So, with a tool with a wire and so on I have a graphic elsewhere in the next slide you can see this. So, see here there is a beautiful 2.5 mm probe. So, typically it could be anything <laughs> let us say you have a any object including a hand or anything like a pen or anything which accidentally does not go inside and then try to short circuit things. So, going back again when we made the IP 2 0 that cover it has openings which are typically little less than 2 and a half millimeters. So, it protected against access to hazardous part with a tool access probe of 2.5 millimeters shall not penetrate. So, the advantage being that uh, by mistake it does not go inside. Now, if you go back to the probe set which comes with your uh, multimeter, you have a multimeter you have a probe set which comes with it one end is made with a banana plug which incidentally is just a little more than the two and a half millimeters. The other end you have a one millimeter probe and depending on the voltage rating sometimes they have a a disc which ensures that flash over does not occur or accidentally your finger does not slip. Very high voltage have a fat holder and a large disc because flash over you can avoid. Small ones it is more of a something to prevent your finger from slipping and then you have a probe depending on uh, their use you can have a sheath in front of it. So, as we go back here you will notice that slowly again hazardous parts again solid foreign objects. So, we have this once again now against solid foreign objects 50 millimeters protected against uh, 12 and half and then against uh, this thing and finally dust protected and dust tight. This is where you would have heard about IP 55, IP 56, IP 65, IP 66 and so on. This refers to the first digit in that. So, both ways things from inside to outside, outside to inside also. You see here as we come here we come into 5 and 6 talk already about something being dust tight. Ah, we are coming into liquids. Not protected completely. The first thing is saying the ingress of water nothing is taken care of by the ingress of water should some water fall inside nothing will happen. Now, you may be wondering why I showed you that studio and myself sitting there at one point why it was shown is while it looks like in a way a relatively safe benign environment you will notice that this air condition cooled specifically not heated in our uh, where we live. So, the moment you have this air conditioning you end up with 
some serious issues by bad luck it does not show we have directly on top of us here I have a what is called a cassette air conditioner. What the cassette air conditioner is it is a what you call a square uh, rectangular or I am sorry a square box where we have the condenser inside and it is not on a wall unlike conventional air conditioners it is not on a wall it is directly back in the middle. Chances are when this cold air from it meets any moist air condensation can take place and this condensation can affect equipment like this. We have a you seen here we have a projector here. So, chances are it will get affected by the projector. I will see if I have one more slide. No, it is the same slide. So, everywhere as such, I will have to go back to this. So, we see here an absolutely unprotected device can get affected even indoors because of unintended condensation because of the change in humidity in the environment. Unless you have a guaranteed humidity control chances are water can condense rather uh, moisture can condense into water droplets and something very much intentional with that is the good old coffee cup. We carry water around we carry water bottles we probably carry coffee and uh, by itself you may not spill coffee. Next time you notice what happens if you take a hot liquid and keep it on a surface condensation takes place and in if you have a cola or any soda bottle which is cooled and taken out of a refrigerator the condensate is there all around it. So, unintentionally we have brought in just about to condense water and then it will drip everywhere. So, it will happen to your keyboards. So, it will happen to any of your electronic equipment. So, this talks about vertically falling water drops. Ah, this is the interesting thing we have this beautiful 15 degree tilt tilted up to 15 degree. vertically falling drop shall have no harmful when the enclosure is tilted at any angle up to 15 degrees on either side of the vertical. So, we have some plus and minus points. So, if you are to carry one of those simple equipment also chances are it needs to work with all this. Now, as you come back here things are getting interesting I just remember this thing no 3, 4, 5, 6 I will start with this is number 3 protected against spraying water sprayed at any angle up to 60 degree in the either side from the vertical you will have no harmful effects that is you take a spray nozzle and spray everywhere where is this likely to happen? just about anywhere. I have shown you examples of the vertical machining uh, center. So, there because of the nature of the operation we have cooling liquids then we have lubricating oil then occasionally we have other chips all this are likely to affect this. Then you see starting that this is where when we talk about IP 55, 56 and all that no first one is about solids from here it talks about the liquids water projected in jets against the enclosure from any direction shall have no harmful effects. 
So, I will get back to this. So, if it are to be mounted like this, we have a beautiful gasketing practice and in general things are sealed. This will what you call put up up to IP 3 1 or 3 2 or something like that. If you are to use proper connectors here probably if water is splashed from here also it will work without the slightest problem. So, at this point let me quit and show you while I am not endorsing the manufacturer. seen here this is the gasket I was trying to talk to you about. Why I have to depend on these sources is we have no access to these testing facilities while I can go and get the con get text uh, conducted in a private or a military place I am not allowed to take a video and show it to you. Hence, I want you to watch the video. You see here, there are three types of connectors here. This one is a cable gland. We have this plug and then it has a ferrule inside and then if you select the proper type of a rubber gasket which comes with it and then if you squeeze it in, I mean when you turn it something is squeezed and it holds it hard there is a tapered portion and it holds it hard. Important is you must always select the correct type of a washer there otherwise it is useless and then again there are two types of connectors here. You notice first of all it is absolutely watertight and this one is where you have socket contacts. In general socket contact means you can take power out of it. This one has plug contacts that means you send power inside. So, both types are required and then you have a nice beautiful thread here then there is a flange here behind the flange you have that rubber mounts which will hold things in place. And when this is not used it also comes with a cap. So, it is not a what you call simple elastomer cap, it is a usual threaded cup like thing which will seal it fully. So, any unused uh, connectors and especially during storage or sometimes these connections are required for testing during installation and troubleshooting. When that function is over they are kept closed.
you see while design is at one level on how to start this uh, up front how do you try to make these designs in real life you have to subject it to the harsh environment as per the specifications that have been shown earlier. So, the military has its own facilities non military test houses are available which conduct the test for you and give a certificate one of them is you can specify saying what is it your equipment can withstand another is you can specify whatever the requirements that have been given in the original IEC 529. So, left to top can you see there IP 65 tests are given there. The test house does not guarantee that each and every unit uh, confirms to this because a lot depends on how you install it and the first time when you attempt to do any repair what happens to it. However, the test house gives a certificate saying under what conditions they ran it and with the understanding saying we conducted it on the samples given to us. I hope that was interesting for you I kept it short I just picked the one. So, right side here you can you know you can see all sorts of tests here but anyway my intention is not to show you all the possible tests my intention is to just to show you how well we try to Ah, let me go back to the previous uh, thing where I left off. So, here the second digit talks about how well we talk we the enclosure is protected. So, the first one if you remember was only about solids. So, if you go up it talks about dust protected versus dust tight. Dust protected is ensures that uh, generally when you have a metal to metal surface something meeting like this chances are dust getting in are very small understood two metal surfaces joining one to each other. And secondly even if you were to have some openings if you provide a, a way of you know a difficult path chances are nothing will happen to it 